When it comes to the edge, how can a telco run basic infrastructure services as well as 5G core control plane nodes, content delivery apps, the various IoT frameworks, security, and so on and so forth. That's a lot to pack into limited space, hence the idea of a unified edge system. Well, joining me now to discuss how OpenShift and Kubernetes can help are Laurent Marchand, who is CEO of Kaloom, and Chris Wright, who is CTO at Red Hat. Gentlemen, good to see you both again. Thanks for having yeah. me today. Red Hat and Kaloom provided a, a preview of the Unified Edge at the recent um, Virtual Red Hat Summit. Laurent, could you talk us through what you showed there um, and also explain the key problems that this solution addresses? Okay, the, as many people know, the latency from large urban areas such as New York City up to a public cloud like AWS or Azure in Northern Virginia is greater than 20 milliseconds. However, several emerging applications require an end-to-end -end latency below 10 milliseconds. To address the need of these latency-sensitive applications, you must bring processing closer to the user or the actual device themselves. Such reality is really the root cause of the emergence of the edge computing market. The obvious way for a telco to deploy edge data center is to convert existing legacy central office into edge data center. Unfortunately, the central office has space, power, and cooling constraint, among others. In most cases, operators are limited by the amount of power that is left in such facilities. As example, with the 15,000 watt budget, there's limited number of servers that can be deployed in an edge data center. Within this amount of power, you may have 18 Xeon scalable server along with the network fabric switches. Commercial networking fabric and network overlay solution need a kind of controller and most fabric controller and virtual network overlay managers require the utilization of three fully dedicated physical server. Moreover, a 5G telco edge required the support of a UPF, which is the user plane function for all IP packet that are sent and received from any kind of device connected to your 5G network. A bare minimum of 500 gigabit per second is needed for the edge. Some of the edge will be way, way more than that. But with the throughput of around 200 gig per server, three additional server are needed strictly for the UPF function itself. Then, of course, for the Kubernetes master, we also required an additional three dedicated server. This means that in my example, nine of the 18 server are running basic infrastructure services rather than revenue generating application. It is even unlikely that it is possible to run the complete 5G standalone packet core, the AMF, PCF, SMF, and so on, plus all the content delivery network application, plus the various IoT framework, plus the firewall, the load balancer, the DDoS protection, and so on needed with only nine available server. So what we have done with the Unify Edge we are running the fabric controller, the UPF control plane function as a container networking function, all the capability masters on the Xeon host processors available inside the networking switch. Moreover, the switches are also running our UPF data plane at terabit per second speed with some microsecond latency. Therefore, all the 18 servers are available for running user application. The Unify Edge provides the most cost-effective OpenShift container platform for telco that exists in the industry. And Chris, there are telcos who have made significant investment in VMs. So what do they do with all these VMs when they've got an OpenShift container platform? Well, that's a good question. It's a common question. There's 
there's a couple different ways that I see customers looking at this. Um, number one, you can always run an OpenShift container platform on top of a virtualization infrastructure. Uh, so you can leverage the cloud native applications uh, with an IaaS platform underneath. Uh, you can also run these side by side uh, and use common uh, management applications to deploy and manage the infrastructure layer if you consider running OpenShift on bare metal. Uh, and then with OpenShift, uh, there is a feature called OpenShift Virtualization, which allows you to run virtual machines on the container platform on bare metal. Uh, so there's a you know, possibility of migrating workloads. What we've seen is many customers have built uh, 4G networks at the core with a OpenStack-based platform. And as we introduce 5G and, and uh, the radio access side and edge application converge platforms, that's an opportunity to, to deploy something new. So in many cases, the 5G rollouts are, are, are new compared to the existing infrastructure and it's connected at the, at the networking level and at the IT operations level. Um, so a lot of different ways you can put these things together. I think you know, over, the, over the, the long term, the industry is really focused on developing in containers and building cloud native uh, network clouds. So, or cloud native functions running on network clouds. So the, my expectation is we'll see more and more interest in the container platform side of the world. Uh, and it's, it's op uh, OpenStack as a platform. It's here, it's gonna stay, it's not going anywhere. It's running a significant part of the existing 4G core infrastructure. Uh, and so, you know, you look at it more uh, life cycles and, and hardware refreshes and how do you evolve a network over the long term while you're building new in the 5G world, um, leveraging all the cloud native technologies that we've been talking about today. Now, an increasingly important requirement for telcos is network slicing. Laurent, how does Kaloom address this requirement? Yeah, network slicing is a 5G mandatory requirement. Uh, slicing is pretty much like taking a physical data center infrastructure and create partitioning into multiple virtual data center or slice. So each virtual data center must be completely isolated from each other while sharing the same underneath pool of compute storage and networking resources. What's interesting is that when you create the slice or virtual data center, you can dynamically allocate or deallocate resources to virtual data center. Uh, as example, it's possible within a slice or virtual data center to run an OpenStack environment with all the associated VM, while in another slice or virtual data center, you run the OpenShift container platform. So Kaloon Cloud Edge Fabric fully support the concept of network slicing since we're basically are providing the software layer from layer two, the internet layer up to layer seven, we are really providing the isolation for a slice down to the hardware level. We're really the first network fabric supporting natively network slicings. We're not relying at all on these kind of overlay tunneling solution because they simply cannot provide the appropriate level of isolation that slicing is supposed to provide to customers. Now, historically, operators have deployed distinct solutions for fixed and mobile access scenarios. Does it still make sense today to to have everything duplicated and access specific. Laurent, what, what's Kaloom's view on this? Okay, I've been involved with fixed mobile conversion for more than a decade. And what I can say is from a technical standpoint, there's absolutely no reason why I should use a radio server for authentication and a fixed access, use a diameter server on a mobile access. It is clear to me that we can leverage the same authentication, the same authorization, the same quality of service, same policy control, same charging mechanism for both fixed and mobile access. Uh, today, Kaloom UPF fully comply with the 3GPP release 15 specification. 
However, we are also providing a technology preview where we are using SRV6 segment routing as an alternative to GTP. Uh, I'm sure that with the incoming uh, release 16, release 17, along with the latest IETF SRV6 standard, it is obvious that in the very near future, we will be able to use a 5G standalone packet core to sustain both fixed and mobile accesses. And Calum again will certainly be among the first offering such capability in the marketplace. And Chris, what are you hearing from your customers and where are we at in terms of actual deployments? Well, it, it's a good question. The, the, the deployments, Kubernetes is not a new technology and OpenShift has been a part of the Red Hat portfolio for quite some time. So we have thousands of customers in production around the globe, uh, spanning all the different industry verticals. The, when, when we zoom in to the, to the carriers, uh, we have, you know, 70, 80 different production deployments of, of OpenShift running uh, different parts of the network for carriers globally. Uh, a big part of the early adopters in, in the OpenShift context was more on the IT infrastructure and modernization side. So OSS, BSS modernization efforts driven by containerization and modern you know, web scale application design principles. So that's one area uh, we're involved in the early rollouts of 5G networks. So OpenShift is powering 5G core. Uh, we just made a recent announcement at our virtual Red Hat Summit about uh, work we're doing with Verizon in that context. And, and we have uh, work underway with other carriers around the globe. And it's also extending from core out to the edge where when we talk about the, the edge, the customers that we're talking to absolutely love the, the notion of a converged platform that improves um, efficiency so you don't have that sort of a large number of, of servers focused on non-revenue generating uh, um, functionality. So, you know, it really resonates with what's what the industry is looking for. And then from an OpenShift point of view, we're, uh, we're seeing a, a global pickup in, in every different industry segment. Great. And Laurent, final thought from you? Yeah, four years ago, we bet an open shift. Uh, I'm glad that today it's more than obvious to me that we made the right choice. Uh, when I look at our overall solution, I think we have a very compelling value proposition. As a starting point, uh, with Red Hat, we brought this single OS across all compute storage and networking. We don't create the, or we don't even need the notion of a specialized Linux distribution on the switch. We're, we're using RHEL Core OS on the, our switch exactly as it can be deployed on the application or storage server, a single OS across all resources and your data center. And of course, we, with OpenShift, that is our universal platform for us, we are bringing networking as first class community citizen with our Unify Edge. So at the end, all these technologies really matter because we are providing significant reduction in operational costs and complexity by relying on OpenShift for both containers and also legacy VM using Kubevert, as mentioned by Chris. So our cloud edge fabric with our embedded 5G UPF allowed us to provide, I would say, 10x TCO saving compared to many solutions from incumbent vendors out there. And I would like to finish by saying that really our technology like Go, containers, Kubernetes, OpenShift, and P4 have really provided us the needed environment to really succeed in the marketplace. So we, without the doubt, we made the right choice. Great, good to hear. Laurent and Chris, thank you both very much for joining us today.